Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. I want to talk about how to warm up thin guitars. Sometimes you just need to record a good, semi-clean Telecaster tone, which is what we have here. Now, this, this song isn't really mixed yet, but here's what that sounds like with the drums and bass that are there. Now, if you get them in the spot where they're sitting, like volume-wise, about right with the drums and the bass, they just come across a little too thin, and they could use a little more thickness. And the way I found to fix that is really interesting to me. So this is one of the kind of nevish EQs that comes with Studio One. And I noticed that, as you may be, if you're familiar with this style of EQ, it only has certain selectable frequencies. And the low mid band kind of defaults to 360 hertz. And I've, I'm, I'm a subtractive EQ kind of guy. So if I'm using drums, then yeah, I'll cut 360 and it brings out a lot of the boxiness. Uh, and I just found myself usually cutting that frequency. But for some reason, I was having something that, kind of like these guitars, that just wasn't warm enough. And you tend to think initially that, okay, it's not warm enough, let's boost the lows. So this particular EQ is boosting 220 hertz and below. Let's do that and see what that sounds like. It's not really doing it, right? It has more low end, but that's kind of the lower stuff that's just going to interfere with the bass guitar and the kick drum, right? Listen to it with the drums and bass. First of all, there's just not a lot of bass information down there. And secondly, anything that's there is really too low to make a difference for a, a kind of guitar like this, a single coil Telecaster sort of sound. But I noticed if I boost here at 360, it does something. It makes it feel warmer without feeling super boomy in the low end. Listen to that. It's almost like it becomes a warm knob. It warms it right up. So in the mix, we can do that and we can feel it's going to have a lot more kind of... I, I, if you like the really thin Telecaster sound, great. I tend to want it to be a little bit thicker, so this is the perfect solution for me. Now at that point you might say, okay, it's warmer, but now it needs a little more brightness. We've lost a little of the brightness there, so let's do that by boosting up here at about just under 5K. Now, if we turn this EQ on and off, you'll hear the difference. There's going to be a volume difference, of course, but listen to the tonal changes to the guitar as well. We'll start with the EQ off. Now, some people might say, well, Joe, you really just increased the volume. You didn't really do too much. And that may be true. Let's test it and see. I'm going to leave the EQ off, and I'm just going to turn the, the volume up and back down and see if it gives us the same difference. My prediction is, as we turn this up, it's going to get louder, but it's going to be a little too bright and not thick enough. Here we go. In this instance, just turning up the guitar wasn't quite right. It got it to be a little bit too bright. It just felt too turned up, if that makes sense. So instead, I just turned up a few of the frequencies. A buddy of mine, Jeremy, was telling me about uh, working on a record here in Nashville with one of, the ni uh, one of the good mix engineers here in Nashville. And Jeremy said, hey, can we turn the piano up? And the guy thought for a second and said, how about this? And he reached for an EQ and just boosted certain frequencies on the piano. It had the same effect as turning it up, but it actually was better for the mix to do it that way. So listen to how these EQs are affecting this guitar, essentially making it louder, but also giving it, it's only turning up the frequencies we want versus the whole thing.
Now, I've said this a million times. I'm a fan of doing subtractive EQ, removing problem frequencies before boosting the good frequencies, but that's not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes the, the tracks sound pretty good. They just need a little more of a balance of maybe low mids and a little high mids to make it sit better in the mix, and that's exactly what we were able to do here. So if you haven't found yourself playing around with the 360 hertz frequency with a little bit of a boost, if you're finding something in the mix that's feeling a little thin and you could use a little bit of warmth, give that a shot. I've even done like a half a dB or a full dB boost on my entire mix bus, and it's given it just a little extra warmth without causing things to start to sound muddy or boomy. If you like mixing, and of course you do, or you wouldn't have made it this far in the video, and you haven't yet checked out my five-step mix guide, it's a great quick read that'll show you my five-step mixing process of how to kind of go through each phase of the process to keep me on track and to make sure I'm finishing mixes quickly, but also still making them rock. Check it out at fivestepmix.com. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.